In today's video I show you how iliopsoas tendinopathy and iliopsoas bursitis look like on MRI and the best way to make the diagnosis. So as you know there are several bursae around the hip joint and we can see them quickly here in this overview. So the iliopsoas bursa is the largest one here just anteriorly to the hip joint. Then we have two smaller bursae, the subglutea media and subglutea minima bursa below the corresponding tendons and on the lateral aspect over the greater trochanter we have the bursa trochanterica or the greater trochanteric bursa. Now the iliopsoas bursa and that's the topic of this video is the largest bursa in humans actually and it can be quite large over up to I think seven or even more centimeters and it might extend all the way into the pelvis and all the way down to the lesser trochanter. And interestingly, there can be a communication with the hip joint in up to 15% of patients. And it seems like the more that the joint is somewhat degenerated, the more likely is this communication there. Now, iliopsoas bursitis can affect anybody. Basically, you can have young athletes, sports, sports people, and old people after hip replacement. They all can get an irritation or tendinopathy or a iliopsoas bursitis. And the typical clinical symptoms are um, pain during active flexion of the hip. So for example, if you're walking stairs or if you try to get up out of your car seat or standing up from your bed, this might actually, so lifting up the leg basically can be painful. That's quite a distinct symptom. Now there is a little bit of a mix up here between bursitis and tendinopathy because one results in the other and vice versa. So if you have a tendinopathy of the iliopsoas tendon, then eventually you get an irritation of the surrounding soft tissue as well, and ultimately a bursitis. And the other way around is probably two as well. So you have bursitis and eventually you will still have an irritation of the tendon or, so it's basically not easy to make this distinction. And sometimes the terms are used interchangeably and you cannot really separate it. Um, based on the symptoms alone. So on MRI, we might get a little bit a better idea and we'll see about that in the, in the next minutes. So before we start to look at some bursitis, first a quick recap regarding the anatomy and you can see here on this pelvis uh, MRI both sides. So we have the psoas muscle and the iliacus muscle and you can see here nicely the tendon. So this is the central tendon here of the psoas, still only just psoas tendon and then we start to see forming here a little bit more on the lateral side, the iliacus tendon, and they then join each other or run parallel to each other and sometimes at least to form a conjoint tendon-like structure that then is inserting onto the lesser trochanter. So this is just to keep in mind that the psoas or iliopsoas tendon complex here is quite broad and it's potentially running straight over the labrum of the hip joint. So this patient has a hip replacement and it, this has been quite some, I think years ago and has clinical symptoms that are consistent with a iliopsoas tendinopathy. So this is the pubic symphysis. So what you do, you scroll to the most anterior sections and then scroll slowly back. You can see the rectus femoris tendon here. You scroll back and then you see here the ilio, iliacus and the psoas muscle and the corresponding tendons coming down, running over the osseous rim here. So from now on, I will only talk about the iliopsoas tendon and not uh, talk about those two separate because otherwise I'm getting confused. <laughs> so if you compare this image, both sides here, you can clearly see on the left-hand side where there is no hip arthroplasty. So he has this other problem there, but he has a very nice looking iliopsoas tendon. It's all black, it's straight, it's thin, no worries. And on the right hand side, we can see that the iliopsoas tendon is broader than on the left hand side. It's brighter in signal intensity, just at the level where it's running over the edge. So it's not just at the level of the cup, but it's also slightly a little bit more proximally. So here at the level of the crossing of the bone. So this is consistent with iliopsoas tendinopathy. And what we now need to do is to see what the iliopsoas bursa is actually doing. And we can use the and any, any fat saturated fluid sensitive sequence basically, but um, typically we have these stir sequences or term sequences. You can either use the transverse or the coronals, both are equally good. Now here on the most anterior sections, we do the same thing. We scroll back and you can see it's a little bit 
brighter. It's not that it's like just a black tendon, which is very smooth, for example, as the rectus femoris tendon here, but it's very smooth here, but we don't see like a fluid collection around it. There is a very subtle irritation of the soft tissue down here. So we can zoom in a little. So this is a little bit an irritation and potentially also an irritation of the iliopsoas bursa, although we don't have it up here into the pelvis. So it's uh, more a tendinopathy than a iliopsoas bursitis, but as I said, these terms are frequently, or these pathologies are frequently um, more or less the same, basically. So now the one question we have with hip arthroplasty patients is, is there a overhanging cup? and or is this the cup mouth position and the best way to look at it is the sagittal sequence where you can try to see whether you actually have portions of the cup extending over the osseous border here but sometimes on MR this can be misleading because we although we have quite nice metal artifact um, suppression or reduction you might still have the wrong impression and what we always should do if you have it available just give a quick look at the radiograph and here you have it, and you can see it's remarkable how the MR did not really appreciate this one here enough, I guess, because this is clearly an overhanging edge here and explains why the iliopsoas tendon shows this severe tendinopathy, because the tendon is running over this metal edge here and with hip flexion and extension, there is chronic friction there that is causing damage to the iliopsoas tendon and therefore we have this iliopsoas tendinopathy. And here you have it both next to each other and you seem to think that there is more bone here on the MR than there actually is. So this is probably the most inferior portion and all the rest of this one here is just um, metal. So always give a look at the radiograph too. In case you don't know, Patreon is a platform where people like you can support content creators like me with monthly pledges or donations if you will. It can be a token of appreciation for as little as $2 a month, but you can increase your pledge and get unique benefits in return, such as a free copy of my book, you can make suggestions for future content, you get access to keynote lectures and more. So go check it out, but only after watching this video. Over the last couple of weeks, I gained many more Patreons that I would really like to thank here. So Benjamin and Gossan, both at $50 a month, which is just fantastic. I Dan, Red Girl, Chibas, each $10 a month, it's also amazing. And then we have Till, Jacob, Martin, Mark and Ram, each at $2 a month and that's great too. I really want to thank you guys for your support and also thanks to all my other Patreons for their ongoing support and their encouraging messages, which really means a lot. I have now even a new camera and new microphone and you should potentially see an increase in production quality. So this 42 year old female had hip replacement on both sides because of developmental dysplasia of the hip and now has pain on the right hand side and we do the same thing we scroll to the most anterior portion and this time it's quite easy you can already see these fluid collections here anterior to the joint itself and just medially and a little bit also laterally to the iliopsoas tendon and this is a very frequent presentation because the iliopsoas bursa is not just on the medial aspect but it's actually below the iliopsoas tendon and if it's fluid filled you can have or frequently see these two pouches. So one on the medial side, one on the lateral side. It's a little bit smaller here. Nevertheless, it's still consistent with iliopsoas bursitis and this is just a transverse section. We can see iliopsoas or psoas and iliacus tendon forming here together. And here, this is the iliopsoas bursa on both sides with these two little ears, which look like one of these comics. And it's very typical presentation here. And also the signal is quite abnormal, so in, in addition to that we probably have psoas tendinopathy and this is again not really worth trying or making a too much effort to, this, to make this distinction because basically it goes hand in hand. So we still have to be careful that not every fluid collection around the iliopsoas tendon is actually bursitis and this is a nice example here. This is a transverse section of the left hip and you can see the iliopsoas tendon here over the hip joint and on the middle side you can see this dot of fluid here and if we scroll through it's quite short so it's not in a longitudinal orientation it's just here next to the tendon so what is this is this actually a bursitis or not and 
you really have to look carefully at all the other stuff too most of the time and you can see here we have a labral tear at the very anterior position just at the level where the ellipsoas tendon is crossing and this labral tear has this paralabral ganglion cyst here that is not bursitis. So you can also see this here. You can also see this here on these coronal views here. You see the both hip joints with some osteoarthritis changes here. And if you scroll to the most anterior portion, you can see the ellipsoas tendon here. And just next to the tendon, it's a very lobulated structure. So we don't have this longitudinal orientation here. So this is just a paralabral ganglion cyst, which is one of the differential diagnoses of ellipsoas bursitis. So always make sure you look carefully also at the labrum and think whether it might actually be a labral cyst or not. So this is just another case here. We have severe osteoarthritis on both sides and along the ellipsoas tendon, more on the medial side or only on the medial side, this large fluid collection consistent with ellipsoas bursitis here. And um, yeah, that's basically it. And a little bit less pronounced also on the other side. Now, if you look at the transverse sections in this particular patient, you can also see that the ellipsoas tendon here is quite thick as opposed to the other side. So if you compare this here with this, so there is quite a difference. I can also show you this here with this new tool here. So there is quite a difference in size and it's a combination of ellipsoas tendinopathy together with ellipsoas bursitis. So this is the last patient. Quickly, um, you can see here fluid just where we would expect it for ellipsoas bursitis. So this is certainly within the bursa. However, this patient had an MR orthrography. And if you look at the T1, you can see there is gadolinium inside the joint. It's all good. But the contrast or the gadolinium is also communicating with the ellipsoas bursa here. So this is the ellipsoas bursa. So we have a communication between the joint and the bursa, which is normally in 15% of the patients or cases rather. So this is now tricky because we cannot say for sure it's bursitis, whereas when there is no communication, it's more likely to be bursitis. So this is quite a tricky case and you might leave it open to the clinical correlation, whether it's actually one or the other, because um, this patient, I think, had also labral tears, etc. So we could have several pain generators at the level of the hip. As I have shown you, the iliopsoas tendinopathy or bursitis can be subtle. And occasionally we need to recommend clinical correlation, even if we want to avoid this safety net as much as possible. But my, in my experience, the site of such findings on MRI typically match the symptomatic site of the patient. Also make sure to check out my new wrist MRI masterclass, which is now available as a pre-final version with a heavy discount. This is a video online course. You can create an account for free and get access to two lessons for, for like a free preview. That's all for this week, folks. Thanks for watching and see you next time.